Okay, welcome to the Monday, October the 7th, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Thank you, member. Rebecca Owens, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. I will let Meredith review, review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so... Oh, one thing I didn't pull out my little cheat sheet. Which you'd think I'd have it all memorized by now, but I play around with the wording here and there. Okay, so this is mostly for um, people who are watching via Orca Media, um, at least everything that's up on the screen. Um, but there is some stuff that I'm going to say that applies to everybody who's on remotely. Um, so for anybody who is viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate um, in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to have the full video experience, please type this link into your web browser and I'll get a notification that you want to be admitted to the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number and then when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. If anyone is trying to get into the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, for everyone who is attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. Um, and know that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, any questions or comments about an actual item on the agenda should be made verbally. Um, and you can raise your hand to be called on by the chair as needed. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Um, tonight so far, everybody who's on remotely is an applicant or part of an applicant's team. Um, so I'll skip over some of the other stuff um, and hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. At this point, unless anyone has anything else to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? We hear a second. And all in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. And Stephen. Agenda is approved. We can move forward to the first application for 3 Chapman Road. Benjamin Doyle and Angela Shea. Go ahead and have a seat at the table and Thank have you. that nice mic you all. barely close to you. Yeah. <laughs> Describe your project for us. Um, well, I think you'll remember that I came here, uh, I don't a few weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer, to take down an uh, existing garage uh, so that we could do some exploratory work. But essentially what we're trying to do is um, uh, put in a small addition on the back of our house um, to kind of replace, I, I don't know exactly, an amalgamation of things that have grown up over time. I think we're trying to like take that down and be more intentional and have a space inside that's functional and uh, attractive on the outside. Um, so it's really just a, it's um, taking down some stuff that's on the back of the house, which we've already done with the garage, and then building uh, this addition. It's it's pretty similar to the same footprint of the garage that was there in terms of like coming out. And uh, I don't know. I just, the way I think about it is it makes the space intentional as opposed to accidental. So the little attached porch that's there now will be extended. Is that what's happening? That's that one's just being extended. No, that's actually being taken down and replaced. Are you talking about the one on the back, Steve? Like, are you talking about the little back porch yes. back here the little, on the A05? Yes. It's going to yeah. fall that same um, that same side, but it's going to be taken down and rebuilt. Oh, okay. So that one's being taken down totally and totally rebuilt. It is being taken down. Okay. Totally and rebuilt. It, you know, it, I, I'm sure you know, right? Like, it, I think originally it was 
an open air porch that they then closed in and turned into a pantry yep. that then was turned into part of our kitchen. And it's, you know, so like two by four construction. It's just a little bump out here that's being taken down entirely. Yeah. Yeah. And replaced oh. with the newer structure. Yeah. Okay. So oh. it's okay. I just, cause the, the, one of the site plans looked like part of that was that the covered part was staying. And it, so I think everything, everything back okay. to the table end is being taken down. Okay. No, that's that's fine. The reason it was confusing is that post garage removal picture, so yes. it looked like that that portion was remaining, but that is yet to be taken right. down. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. We um. It's actually taken down the photograph next to it. Mm, actually, I think that's, that's just really close. Bump out of store there because if you look to the far left, you yeah. can see the main house. Yeah. And I I should to clarify. The foundation that you see there, mm -hmm. uh, for that that will stay. It's all the it's the porch up above, okay. right? So like that stonework, okay. And the foundation on the left hand side, that'll all stay. And they're going to tie in the a new new foundation components mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. So it's the A one point two drawing. The east elevation perspective shows like an existing and then proposed addition. That's why I was confused, thinking that part of that bump out was going to. That stay. That's a the elevation drawing, and I can pull it up on the screen if you want. If that's just easier. That's okay. I mean, it doesn't yeah. make any difference. I was just design review wise, it didn't make any difference for, for whether... building permit wise for Michelle knowing what's happening. Okay, it'll matter. Yeah, everything's coming down. <laughs> All right to the main. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because that'll be an additional, like a little bit of demo work that Michelle yes. will need to make sure is being done right for the building permit. Okay. That's now, is the roof flat or is it slightly sloped? Slightly sloped. Slightly sloped. Okay. In which direction? Probably away from the deck. Uh, yeah, I believe the stairs. Sort of. Uh, yes. Yep, I think that's the direction that it's going. It's probably slightly hipped. Hmm. Which is why you don't see any any sort of a gable on that end. Near the uh, sort of um, roofline soffit details match the screened in porch on the other side. Pretty close, I think. It, uh, drawing a 1.2, I think. Kind of shows it. I'm assuming the roof on the addition is going to be like a membrane. Yeah. Okay. It shows it has a pitch of a quarter inch per foot. Anyone have any questions, comments, suggestions? I guess I am a little curious what. Uh rustic channel siding means. <laughs> um, I think it's one in, I think it's, uh, I think the way we've talked about it and then, uh, is um, like one inch board, wooden one inch board uh, with just a little space, just a little space in between. So like a wide board, like a one by 10. <laughs> over sheathing or it's, and then there's just like a, a, a gap it says it has a one inch reveal so it's basically has a one inch area that's recessed so it yeah, almost it sense. almost looks like a reverse board and batten
Let me see if I can pull something up. It's sort of tough to get wood siding that looks like stone. Right. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I will say that's definitely what we wanted to avoid. Like, I didn't want to do anything that's right. trying to look like something other than right. this. Right, right, right. Uh, and if it's a dark, dark gray, it'll actually, the color will resemble the stone. And then again, if you, with some shrubbery in front of it, you won't yeah. see much of it anyway. That's the whole thing. So no more garage? Nope. No more garage. We couldn't have really, well, actually, I mean, it, the space down below is not going to be livable space, right? And so that'll kind of, uh, all we were using that garage for was storage. storage. Yeah. So we'll continue to do that. So Ben, do you want me to pull up something that I just found that sure. has sort of a close look? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a one by 10 that they call it channel rustic that I think is kind of what we're talking about here. Um, it's just, it's not the right color, but it should pop up there. So here is, you've got a sort of channel in between, like you said, it's like reverse board and batten. So the thin part is actually behind and recessed instead of being forward. So it's a manufactured product, like it's a sheet good, like it's a, no. it's a, um, it's a spruce. It says spruce pine fir, right? But it's yeah. not like a T one eleven sheet good. It's just a definitely. Not. It's a milled gap. I don't know. Yeah, it's milled gap provides you with a reverse board batten look. Yep. So it they're they're. I've been thinking that it's like the seats at three penny like that. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to look like. Yep. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool that they can do I that. I had a hand in building, so I, I know what that I know. these are. Uh, like. <laughs> Contractor may or may not want to, but it's a really good idea to back it with water and ice shield. Yeah, what they do usually only do that on rooms, but when you have boards like that, yeah. It's a really good idea to back it up with a water and ice shield okay. in case you ever get any warpage and it rains sideways like it like yeah, to yeah. do frequently. Mm -hmm. It that makes a big difference. Good. And if that I'm not sure what colors that comes in. If it comes in a grayish color. It would match the be the best color to match the stone. Yeah. No, I think that that. I mean, I think that that's you can always stain it or spray it afterwards as well. Any other comments, suggestions? I can go down through the criteria. There's a criteria sheet for all the projects in the district. All projects. Exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced where possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. This application is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Height. Of building addition shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings. Of a new building shall be compatible with the varied heights of existing adjacent buildings acceptable. 
proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible. The addition is acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate immediate area. Concealed rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Roof forms and pitch shall not be altered on the primary facade. Acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate but shall respect the original historic building's architectural features. Acceptable. Roof drainage systems. Roof drainage system shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible, acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures. Character-defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and moldings shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character-defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character-defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features acceptable. Location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure and that fits the building design and layout, acceptable. Do you have any heat pumps in the building or, or proposed for the building? We actually uh, do, yeah. We're going to um, put a split system in, uh, in the kitchen. Okay. And do you have a location for the outside compressor? Um, I think we're open to suggestions. <laughs> um, I, I was thinking it would go kind of off the... Uh, I'm looking at Northwest Perspective One. Uh, I was thinking it would go kind of off the back there, of the house. It's on the site. It's um, you really don't see that back of the house. But anyway, that's where I was thinking it would go. So if I'm facing the addition to the right of the staircase in back there, you could actually put it under underneath the stairs. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, so it needs to. I can't remember where your property line is back there. It's so there's setbacks. That yeah, have to meet, got plenty of room. And yeah, so um, and actually that being back there as long as it's setbacks, I think in that location it's an administrative approval. So we don't even need, need to add it in here. No, okay, I was just looking to see if they were if you were had any plans for anything in the future, so you didn't have to come back. But if yeah. that's administratively approved. There's Plus, not a, there's not an additional fee for that. Uh, I mean, he, there is, but I mean, Michelle's going to need to see the building permit plans unless that was part. I didn't see that as part of that before. I don't no, think. I don't think so. Yeah. And so, I was just I mean, wondering if, you, if we could include that location under the stairway for sure. you, can, and then he doesn't have to come back because that could be mounted uh, either on a platform or it could be mounted on the wall on a bracket, yep. which keeps it off the ground above the snow. You uh, throw that in as administratively as approved by you guys ahead of time, then I don't need to charge the design review for that. Okay. That'd Save you money and time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Everybody okay with that? I'll just need to, you can do it subject to uh, administrative review like or okay of location 
Like, okay. In case it ends up being on the ground. That's all. I don't need the setbacks, but just to double check. Okay. And um, do what do I tell? Can you tell me more about like there's still? Do I need to get another demo permit? Or is that? Um, I, I don't think you'll need to. Just talk to Michelle about that. Okay. Right. I, I think she just needs to know that no, that okay. is okay. part of the project because Great. the plans didn't make that clear. Yeah. Great. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. And Stephen. It is approved. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you you should come see it when it's done. It's done. Think it uh, good. Because you're here in person, I'm going to have you sign this form okay, that okay. Steve is filling out. Um, and that way I think we get his. And just sign right below my name there. And that. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Did you want to put a little note in about the? Like, yes. Did you put one in about the I have it unit? Yet, okay. Will, cool. Well, awesome. add it in. Just making sure. Eric got that. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. We can move forward to the next application for Forty One College Street New School Holdings LLC. Is someone present to describe the application? Whichever one of you wants to talk first, feel free to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. I know we've all, for everybody who's on right now, it's on for this application. Excuse me. Yeah, so um, my name is Mark Momney. I'm with Blackboard Design Architects. We're working with uh, Elias Gardner from New School. Elias, do you want to introduce the project briefly? Sure. Um, so New School purchased the building in January, and we're looking to renovate i mean the, the main goal for us is to get another floor of usable space for a school and so that is you know that involves a new water system because the or water access comes through the other building right now and a new electric access and um you know basically a, a pretty large removal of asbestos in the buildings so a lot of it's getting gutted and then put back together um what else? I mean, there's a lot more detail on the, the documents, obviously, but that's that's the main goal. And we've been working with, you know, Historic Preservation for Act 250 because, uh, you know, they it's it's a you know, it's a historic campus. And so trying to make sure that the like ventilation system, which, you know, we're proposing windows that are being replaced with louvers for vents. So it's not very obvious or less obvious than cutting whole new holes in the walls. And. Yeah, at the start, at least. What else do you want to know? Uh, so just just as a summary, so design reviewers cares about stuff on the outside of the building. Um, and I sent them most, I, I printed out most of the packet for them. Everything's in the electronic packet, but I printed out a lot of it so they have the understanding as to why you're filling in those windows, right, for the HVAC system and where that's having right. been. Um, and then you are making some changes to the, a little bit of changes to the entryway. It's not like the big, the big pull that, that you had wanted to do with like the elevator access and everything between the buildings. Um, yeah. But you are making some changes to that entryway. So that's what they care about. Um, and the filling in the windows. And I don't know if there was much else. There was like a little bit of landscaping, but um, those were the, the main things and the main reasons that those were here. Yeah, so I'll I can speak to the the work on the outside of the building. So the front entry off College Street uh, currently is not accessible, um, and so part of the project would entail making the first floor accessible from College Street. And there's a an image inside the packet of the the existing front door. And so as Elias said, we've talked with A and R and uh, the Division of Historic Preservation. We actually gave them a tour of the site and went over the, the scope of the project. Uh, Historic Preservation asked that we look at two options for making the front door accessible. Um, one of them was to move the existing door over such that we had the pull side clearance on the front door uh, for accessibility. Um, and that would entail reusing the existing wood door 
and to the extent possible, reusing or repurposing one of the side lights on the doors that we would be actually eliminating by moving the door over. Um, thank you. Um, so yes, the, the bottom right-hand image is the screen. one of the options. Uh, well, option two is where I started. That involves moving the door over to the left of the existing opening and then rebuilding a new side light or if there's some way to marry up the two side lights that are existing on either side of the door into one big one. Um, that was one option we looked at. Historic Preservation uh, was less pleased with that option. Um, they were hoping we would be able to figure out a way to leave the existing door as is. And one of the thoughts we had uh, was to put an ADA uh, push button operator out in front of the building prior to getting to the front entrance. And so we talked with Michelle about that. We actually met Michelle on site last week to, to give her an overview of the project. And she said her initial thought was that the ADA push button operator out on the front walk would be an acceptable alternative to reconfiguring the front door. Um, and so that's one, that's the major component of work at the front door. Um, there's a few other pieces. One is the front walkway. Um, right now that's uh, asphalt pavement. That will be replaced uh, to probably a little bit more than half the, the distance uh, off of College Street or off of the front door um, at a ADA appropriate grade. Uh, so we don't need handrails on either side of it. We will also be replacing the front stoop. Um, right now, the old existing concrete stairs are actually underneath that um, asphalt walkway. You can see in the, the lower left-hand images, you can see the old concrete uh, stairs and base underneath the columns. We'd originally proposed boxing out around those columns um, to maintain them. Uh, because they are, we know they are historic. We talked with historic preservation. They were actually okay with us lifting those columns up and putting them at a, the base of them on a higher elevation on a new concrete pad. And so that's uh, the approach we're going to go with there. Uh, so the, for all intents and purposes, the upper right-hand image on that page is, is more or less where we're looking to go. And both Historic Preservation and A&R have tentatively signed off on this approach. We do need to submit a full application to them, um, but this is what but they have already seen this. We've sent the same information off to them. Um, and they were hoping that uh, the, the push button operator would be approved. So um, I do want to do questions on this piece first before we go to the other, the, the windows or? No, the um, option one looks very nice. And that that was what you said that was the one that historic preservation preferred. Yes. What's the width of the door, by the way, just out of curiosity? Uh, I believe it's over three feet wide. Um, so from an access, we don't need we didn't need to change the width of the door leaf itself. That is actually accessible. Um, oh, okay. So the plan is to re, you know we're basically just going to repaint everything, and you know if we need to fix up some trim or stuff here and there, we will, but uh, this allows us to more or less leave the door and the entrance as is, and then just rework the the concrete uh, stoop and the, the flanking columns. Okay. I have a question. It looks like uh, with the ironwork on top, that is, some, is that just for um, reference? It's not gonna get changed because it looks like some of the details were not translating over. Yeah, that's a product of the amount of time it takes actually to input that into the machine. But uh, okay. that iron work is all going to remain in place. We won't be doing any any work to that. Okay, great. But I do, I like it. I like with the push button too. I think that looks nice. Okay, I think everybody has their questions answered. Do you want to move forward to the uh, to the louvers? Yes, and so 
part of this project entails putting a new mechanical system into the building, which the building itself, the structural system is fairly challenging in that the floor to floor height is not very great. Uh, it's about eight feet from floor to floor, and, and then you have to take out the the structure. And so we looked at multiple different options of how to wedge a uh, essentially a new heat pump system into the building. The building, uh, the, the first phase of construction, we will be keeping the existing steam system in the building that's fed from the adjacent noble hall, but we will, the future build out will have the heat pumps put in. Um, to start with though, we will only be putting ERVs in and in the corners of the building, we are building these ERV heat pump closets. Um, and essentially those closets need loop air intake and ex exhaust in each closet for the, the ERVs and the future heat pumps. And so you can see in these elevations, the windows that we're planning on replacing with mechanical louvers. And, and just for reference, the project we're talking about now is essentially the basement and the first floor, the upper two floors of the building. That's a, a future phase that we're not doing right now, which is why you only see louvers in the two or lower two floors. Eventually, the upper two floors will also have mechanical closets that will require uh, mechanical louvers. Uh, and so, again, we toured the the building, the outside of the building with A&R and, and the division and showed them where these louvers were going to be. They were, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but they were happy that none of the louvers were going to be put on the the front elevation of the building facing College Street. And so this elevation we're looking at right now uh, is the elevation that faces Alumni Gymnasium. I've zoomed in up on the screen for you guys. And then as you go around the back of the building, there are some additional louvers that will be put in. Yeah, so there, yeah. Um, so there's that's the south elevation that faces Noble Hall. And you can see there's some louvers in there again in the basement and the first floor and then if you can look at the east elevation the east elevation we won't actually have any mechanical louvers um and actually i take that back we will have one in the the basement um what we will have on the on the east facing which is the the back of bishop uh are the heat pumps condensers that'll be mounted on the foundation wall between the the windows um and that's so they're not on the ground taking up space. Um, the louvers, them, so we will be reusing the existing masonry openings. We'll be taking the existing windows out and putting a mechanical louver in. Um, historic preservation had two criteria they would they wanted us to address, one of which was a color that uh, they felt was compatible with the, the brick. Um, they preferred a dark color, and they suggested we we look at some of the darker flashing on the existing brick masonry. And I think in the the packet there were some um, possible color options for the louvers. They also asked that the the plane, the face of the louver, be in the same plane as the window itself, and that we put a brick mold around the edge of the louver such that it uh, carried over the look of the window. Um, as as the the flanking windows that are remaining will have the brick mold that the the mechanical louvers also have the brick mold on. Well, yep. What do we see when these louvers are open, and do they make a lot of like is is there a fair amount of noise or is it a relatively quiet? Are they like what opens them? Is it a mechanical opening or is it the actual like rush of air that is opening them? Uh, these will be connected to the the ERVs and the heat pumps, and they'll be within a closet, so they'll be relatively quiet within the building. Um, the part of the reason for the closet is because we didn't want the the noise to to bother the students, uh, but also the you know we didn't want the mechanical equipment exposed in the the teaching spaces inside the building. So when the louvers open, unless there's a light in the closet, the only thing you'll see is just dark space behind the louvers, I would imagine. Is that the case? Yes, the, the louvers will, will have ducts that tie into them. 
So you won't, the, the louvers are essentially always open. Okay. So you can see on the upper left-hand image, the, the louver is actually, it'll have a horizontal mullion to split it between the intake and the exhaust. Um, and that again was the historic preservation was, was happy with that is it, it'll mimic the, the dividing sash line of the, the windows to remain. Yeah, and I think, and Andrew, you can or you can jump in. I, the historic preservation was leaning towards a darker gray color for the color of the louvers. Yeah, we haven't necessarily color matched yet to the green X um, chips, but something in that range that's outlined would probably be what would match some of the darker swatches. <clears throat> like the classic bronze? But yeah, potentially, yep. Um, I think it, Meredith, if you can scroll down, I think you can see some of the darker. So the, yeah, they suggested we we match something in the darker flashing of uh, the existing brick, uh, which is they're they're dark grayish brown somewhere in there. The darker, the better. Any questions about the louvers or the compressor locations? Seems as though they're a thoughtful approach to a complex problem. Okay. That's my take too, is that it's probably gonna be a vast improvement in the best case scenario for looks, yeah. It seems to be about the best you can do with a uh, new technology adaptation to an existing building. Trying to modernize historic buildings. Yes. It's it's happening all over and it's going to keep happening in the city for various reasons. So. Yep. Any other comments or questions? So I can go down through the criteria for this application. I'll go through the criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Rhythm. The visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of, build, of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall be considered the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings? And then again, mechanical equipment screening, the 
treatment of the mechanical equipment is acceptable for this application. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. And Stephen. It is approved. Uh, I'm sorry. I just noticed that the application says new school holdings. I thought we resubmitted it as College Street Holdings. The building's owned by College Street Holdings. Um, I, I, you can just send me an email clarifying. I, right. I, I don't. It, it may be that we printed out one. Uh, if you change the name when you like sign something, maybe we kept the original cover sheet, the original front, and just printed out the back with the signatures. Um, <laughs> cool. I'll send you an email. Thank you. Yeah, just send me an email to, to clarify uh, the owner name. That works just fine. Um, so Michelle is out of the office tomorrow for the building permit. So probably what we'll do is we'll um, get everything ready, but wait and make sure that the building permit's ready too, so that you can just come pick everything up together instead of having them issued in separate envelopes. Um, and do you want to pick them up or do you want us to mail them? It's easy to pick them up. Perfect. That's what I figured. Yeah. Just I'll check. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we did mention to Michelle that the actual construction documents for the building permit aren't going to be ready until January. Okay, so I'll I'll tell well I'll tell I'll just confer with her on Wednesday when she comes in. Okay. It might be that we issue the zoning permit first, um, but I don't I don't I haven't talked to her in a little bit about this particular project, um, as to how she wanted to phase that. So Wednesday at the earliest. Thank you. You're welcome. Has everybody had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from September the 16th? Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for coming and good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I was not here, so I don't think that there's enough of us to approve the notes. Okay. I was also not here. Oh, <laughs> so, but they look good. Scratch, scratch that. We can push it to the next one. Yeah. I mean, technically you can have people who weren't at the meeting, like review it for typos mm -hmm. and stuff. But when we're down to just one person who was there, I make no effort at this point. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fine to push that to the next meeting. It's just minutes. Next meeting. Does anybody have anything else to add? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. And Rebecca, second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. And Rebecca. Stephen, meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.